Until the recording. Perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. It's uh, my great pleasure to introduce Professor Eva Galardo Gutierrez from Madrid, who will speak on the generators of <coughs> strongly continuous semi groups of weighted composition generators. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the kind invitation, especially to the mayor and to Javad. It is a pleasure to, to participate in, the, in this semester or in this time. Um, when they talk me to, to speak about uh, during this time and they located me in this week, I thought about speaking of something that was related to this week. I know there have been a course uh, by Isabel Chalendar and several talks about uh, semi-groups of uh, composition operator acting on different spaces. I was not able to attend uh, any of them because uh, okay, I had to teach, but uh, I prepared slides uh, in a general framework in order to, to make this talk as, as self-contained as possible. I'm going to talk about generators of C0 semi-groups of weighted of composition operators and weighted composition operators. And most of the talk, uh, the work I'm going to talk about, it's part of two works. One was joined with Professor Dimitri Jakubovic from Autonoma University of Madrid. And the other one is with Dimitri Jakubovic and Aristo Menisiskakis from, from Greece. But let me, let me start with an introduction that probably is well known for those that were attending to the course and some of the speakers during, during this week. Oops. Okay. B is going to denote the Banach space, and then we will have a one parameter family, T sub T, of bounded linear operators acting on the Banach space. We know it's called a semi group if it's satisfied that T0 is the identity and T sub T times T sub S uh, is T times T plus S for every T and S positive. And it's called a C0 semigroup if it is strongly continuous. That means that this limit, the, the limit of when T goes to zero of T sub TF is F for any F in the Banach space. Once we have a C0 semigroup, we may define the generator, which is defined by this formula for uh, those functions such that this limit exists. This is usually a, a close and densely defined linear operator on B. And one of the features is that it determines the semigroup uniquely. Indeed, uh, as a consequence of the uniform boundedness theorem, if we have a C0 semigroup of operators, then it's, there is always a constant a real number omega and a constant positive, uh, indeed bigger, still, uh, bigger or equal than one, such that this, this is uh, inequality holds. And when M is equal to one, the semi-group is called quasi-contractive. This would be part of the story that I'm going to introduce today. When we have a composition operator semi-group, there is a seminal work by Bergson and Porta in 1978, where they gave a complete description of the generators of semigroup of this composition operator when they do act in the Hardy space. And they, they are induced by a holomorphic flow of analytic self map of the unit disk. Probably everybody knows now what a holomorphic flow is because of the course, but just recall that it is a family, continuous family of analytic self maps of the disk with the semi-group property respect to composition. In other words, it's satisfied that P of zero of Z is just the identity. It satisfies the composition uh, property, okay? And for any S bigger or equal than zero, it's satisfied that the limit when T goes to S this is continuous, right? It gives us phi sub s of z. And clearly, if we have a holomorphic flow, we have a semigroup of composition operators, which is just composing with the elements of the flow. 
And this is always strongly continuous in the Hardy space. That was what Bergson and Porta showed. And the same holds for all their classical species of analytic functions, like for instance, the Dirichlet space that was proved later by Siskakis. All right, we may compute the generator of the composition of the semigroup, and it's related, uh, I mean, the generator A of F is G time F prime, where G is a specific analytic function in D. Indeed, G is the infinitesimal generator of the holomorphic flow. It satisfies this partial uh, equation. Uh, the partial derivative respect to G of phi, it gives us G in phi sub T at Z. And that has to happen for every T at R plus and C in D. In a rather interesting uh, paper by Abiko, Chalandar, and Partington, they provided a complete description of quasi contractive C0 semigroups of bounded operators of acting on the Hardy space and the Dirichlet space, such that the generator had this form that we were talking about. And G is an analytic map of the analytic function in the unit desk. In particular, a particular instance of the results is the following one. Let us assume that B, the Banach space, is either the Hardy space or the Dirichlet space, and suppose the generator and suppose that we have an unbounded operator A defined this way for F in the domain of A. Then A generates a C0 semigroup of composition operators on B if and only A generates a quasi contracted C0 semigroup on B. Okay, that was the starting point of our work in some sense because it was opened if there exists and the mounted operator of this way, of this class, which, which could be a generator, a C0, which could be the generator of a C0 semigroup, which was not of composition operators. And in the joint work with uh, Dimitri Jakubowicz, we provided an answer to this question, not only in the context of the Hardy space or the Dirichlet space, but also for more general functional spaces. And in order to tell you a little bit about this result, let me put some um, comments on it. First, let us assume B is the Banach space of holomorphic functions in the unit desk and the nodes by holomorphic of D, the space of all holomorphic functions in D, and by calligraphical O of closure of D, the set of all functions which are holomorphic in a neighborhood of the closure of the unit desk. And we will impose uh, what we think was the natural assumption on the space B. And it is that this condition that we will call a star says that this, uh, we have these embeddings and those are continuous. For instance, the Hardy space or the Dirichlet space satisfies these embeddings clearly. Then the first thing that we may notice in this sense is that if we have a holomorphic flow on the unit disk, then the composition operators uh, defined by that holomorphic flow, it's always a semigroup, that's easy, but it is a C0 semigroup whenever B is reflexive. And the idea for this is simple. If we take just the uh, pointwise functionals, I mean, the evaluation functionals, those are complete in B star. And this condition, the condition star that we will recall several times in our talk, implies that this family of composition operator is quickly continuous. Now, a well-known theorem in semigroup theory tells you that it has to be strongly continuous. So what we're saying is that if B is reflexive, we have a strongly continuous semigroup in particular associated to the holomorphic flow. But we can say even more. In a, a resolve of Oscar Blasco, Manolo Contreras, Santiago Diaz, Jose Martinez, I don't know the 
or, I mean, this uh, given name of Papadimatrikis and Siskakis, I mean, the Spanish team and the Greek team, let's say, they proved that indeed under these conditions, the generator of the semigroup always have this form. It's just a multiplication operator. It has, I mean, it's usually unbounded, right? Where the domain is provided by the functions in the Banach spaces that this multiplication is also in the Banach space. So under this natural assumption, when we have a holomorphic flow of the unit disk, we have a C0 semigroup when B is reflexive. And in addition, we know that the generator has this one. Basically, this result tells you that those are all the, uh, those are the only possible generators that you could have for C0 semigroup of uh, composition operators. I, and that, uh, that says that if you have a Banach space of analytic function that satisfy conditions start and both embeddings are continuous. And if you have an analytic function in D and the operator A defined as the one that we were dealing with, right? Just multiplication by G in this domain, A generates a C0 semigroup on B if and only a generates a C0 semigroup of composition operators. So the work was the contractive in the work by Abiko, Chalendar, and Jonathan Partington were somehow uh, extra. There are some remarks that I think uh, it's important to note. Uh, Wolfram Aren and Isabel Chalendar obtain independently analogous results regarding generators of C0 semigroups of composition operators. Nevertheless, in some sense, our results uh, are incomparable in the sense that they, the results do not imply ours and vice versa. Let us, let us uh, see what we want to mean. The difference rely on the requirement on the Banach space and we were requiring this condition, start. And Wolfgang and Isabel were studying even a broader scope using holomorphic flows on general domain in the complex plane. When you restricted the result to the, to the unit disk, some of the spaces that we are covering with our result were not covered by their, their result, but we were not dealing with this general domain. So in that sense, they were complementary each other. The second remark that uh, it's important to note here is that you may consider other higher order differential expression in the disk, and those were studied by Isabel Chalena and Jonathan Partington, but the composition, the corresponding operator semigroup in general do not have such a clear geometric interpretation like in the case of uh, composition operators. What happens if B is not reflexive? Okay, if the Banach space is not reflexive, not all bounded semigroups of composition operator on the Banach space are C0 semigroups. They, are, they don't need to be strongly continuous. Indeed, for some of them, there is no non-trivial C0 semigroup of composition operators on B. For instance, uh, for spaces between H infinity and the block space, and I will come to this later at the end of my talk, but I guess the natural question that arises here is that if we consider a non-reflexive Banach space, it would be interesting to have a result where it tells us how the generators of a bounded uh, composition semigroup, not C0, but semigroup, of course, uh, are characterized. This is uh, what it's stated here. I mean, where C0 semigroup is substituted by a weaker property valid for all bounded composition semigroups. That we don't know. More. All right, so if you uh, uh, want to see a little bit about the proof, uh, because it will be of interest later, 
about the proof of this uh, result, the situation is that, let me go. We want to prove that A uh, generates a C0 semigroup on the Banach space, if and only if it generates a C0 semigroup of composition operators. So just one implication is necessary. So let us assume that A generates a C0 semigroup, T sub T on B. And then the goal is trying to find the holomorphic flow such that T sub T is just a composition operator by uh, phi sub T, okay? And then the step zero is considering echo chip problem. We fix a radius R between zero and one, and we pose echo chip problem that involves the function G. Okay, with this initial data and uh, in this disk. Then using uh, ordinary differential equation theory in complex domain, the, it tells us that there exists a moment T0 and an analytic solution in it because of uh, the theorem of Kovaleskaya, Koshi Kovaleskaya, of this Koshi problem defined for every set in this disk and all complex numbers T which modulus are strictly less than T0. After a bit of care, oh, by the way, this um, Kochi problem is autonomous and that in particular tells us that the solution phi sub T has the semi-group property that we were asking in order to be a holomorphic flow. So once we have the solution of the Cauchy problem, the idea is trying to prove that the semigroup that the, we were given is just the composition operator semigroup. So the first step is proving that for any f in the domain of the operator A, this is valid. That requires some uh, proof, of course. But once you have that, since the domain of A is dense, this condition holds for every function in the Banach space. All right, if it holds for a function in the Banach space, we may apply to the identity function of the Banach space. And we, did, we do get that T sub T of the identity is precisely phi sub T. But this is just valid for the modulus of set strictly less than R and t between zero and t sub zero. And then the goal is defining phi sub t as the analytic continuation of this um, for every t, proving that this is well-defined. And indeed, it requires a little bit of care, proving that there exists a moment t sub one says that phi sub t takes uh, the unit this into itself for all the t smaller than this one. Once you have this, a little bit of analysis tells you that uh, you are able to uh, construct the holomorphic flow that uh, gives you the composition operator semigroup, which is indeed t sub t as we defined it. Okay, there are some consequences of this result in the context of uh, C0 semigroup of operators. As I said, Abiku, Challenger, and Partington proved that any C0 semigroup of composition operator in the Hadley space is quasi contracting And the constant in the definition that was at the beginning of my uh, slide is equal to one. But the argument extends to a wide range of Banach spaces. Indeed, assume the following condition, let us call two star on the Banach space. For any univalent function, eta, which must the unit this into itself and satisfy eta of zero equal to zero, let us suppose that the norm of the composition um, uh, operator by eta is uh, less than one, right? We have this inequality. This in particular implies that the Banach space we're considering is rotation invariant. Okay, 
if we consider the hyperbolic this automorphism that fix one and minus one, the classical, those are rather classical, at least in my work, right? This set plus R over one plus R set when R belongs to zero one. One of the consequences that we can derive from the theorem I just told you is the following one. Suppose that the Banach space has the property a star and two star. Recall, this was saying that the holomorphic functions in the closed unit disk was embedding continuously in our Banach space and this one was embedding continuously in the holomorphic functions of T. And this one is telling you that the composition operator by univalent functions that are fixing zero has no less than or equal than one. Then the following holds. Every holomorphic flow, phi sub t, generates a bounded semigroup of composition operators on the Banach space, not necessarily a strongly continuous, a C0 semigroup, if and only if the composition operator induced by this particular hyperbolic automorphisms, alpha r, are bounded on b for any r between zero and one. And the second condition, or the second statement, is that every holomorphic flow, phi sub t, generates a quasi-contractive semigroup of composition operators on b, like the result that uh, Abiku, Challenger, and Partington proved for the Hardy space, if and only if the composition operators induced by this particular disactomorphisms are rounded on B for every R and satisfy an estimate of the norm of this kind for some non-negative constant A. This is the kind of estimate it happens in the hard space. The proof is quite different when you are not having the structure behind you, like the hard space, and you know how to compute the norm. But anyway, in this case, for any univalent function phi that takes the unit test into itself, we are able to estimate the norm of C phi acting on the space. As I said, uh, just observe that B is a rather general Banach space of analytic functions in the unit test. There is a remark, oh, by the way, the proof of this result used non-estimates for compositional operators that were obtained in a joint work with Jonathan Partington, mainly in weighty hardy spaces. There is a remark that I guess it's worthy to, to point out, and it is that the quasi-contractive property of composition semigroup is really very sensitive to, the, to changing the norm by an equivalent one. For instance, if you, I, I'm pretty sure in this time, because I have seen some talks, have appeared the weighty Hardy spaces H2 beta. Hardy, the Hardy space, the Dirichlet space of the Berman space are just a, examples of those weighty Hardy spaces. Okay, the, the situation is, is that it's possible to provide examples of weighty hardy spaces, H2 beta, such that this semigroup uh, here, uh, I made a chain of variable R in order to have T between zero and infinity, right? This is the hyperbolic tangent of T, but anyway. It's possible to provide example of weighty hardy spaces such that the corresponding semigroup of the hyperbolic disautomorphism is quasi-contracting, but if we change the weights a little bit, giving an equivalent norm, the resulting quasi, uh, semigroup it fails to be quasi-contractive. Uh, with the, I mean, the, the same semigroup, sorry, with the resulting norm, fails to be quasi-contractive. So this is really, really very delicate statement in some sense. All right. The second half of our talk are going to deal with uh, weighted composition operators and weighted composition operators semigroup. Clearly, everybody probably in the audience know what a weighted composition operator is. If you have two functions, H and phi, and a set, no matter what you like, X, 
such that v of x is contained in x, we always may consider the following linear map, right? We take a function f and just consider the composition by phi of f and then multiply by h. This is what we call the weighted composition, the weighted composition operator induced by h and phi whenever it is bounded in the space of a, that you're considering. The, I guess the questions that may uh, raise up here is why studying weighted composition operators? Is this just another uh, way to have more problems to play with? And of course, they, I think they are interesting by themselves, but weighted composition operators have appeared in the literature since I guess the first example I was able to find out was due to Banach in 1930. There is a very nice result proved by Banach that told you, that tells you that if you have a compact metric space and you have, these are the continuous function on X and you know that T is a surjective linear isometry, then T has this expression where h has modulus one, it's a function measure, it's a function that has modulus one, and phi is a homeomorphism, bijective and bicontinuous, okay, of x onto itself. So in other words, t is a weighted composition operator. This is probably one of the oldest results, at least I found, but there, is, there are other classes of uh, weighted composition operator that appears to be interesting, at least from my perspective. Those were introduced by Bishop in the 50s. If you take an irrational number, alpha, then you may consider T sub alpha. Here it's in L2, but you can consider even in LP, the Lebesgue space is LP. T sub alpha of H, is just multiply, multiplying by the independent variable x, and the function x is composed with the uh, fractional part of x plus alpha for every x in zero one. So that's the definition of the of the fractional part. These operators are surprisingly difficult to handle with, though they are the composition of two simple operators. One is the multiplication by x, and the other one is the composition by this uh, symbol, the fractional part, right, of x plus alpha, which is indeed unitary here, but anyway. The situation is that uh, this operator were proposed by Bishop as possible counterexamples for the to the invariant subspace problem. And in 1974, Debbie, with a very clever construction using a functional uh, calculus argument, proved that these weighted composition operators, Bishop operators, has non-trivial invariant subspaces for almost every irrational alpha, but not for all of them, indeed he was not able to prove for UVL numbers. There have been a lot of work on this direction, but nowadays it's still an open question if this way, this bishop operator have non-trivial invariant subspaces for every alpha. So once again, we have an example of weighted composition operator, which happens to be like the head of a big problem. And in the context of uh, uh, analytic functions in the unit this, I guess the main results that we can recall here are those by the Lou, Rudin, and Bermar from 1960, where they characterized the isometries of the classical Hardy space H1 in terms of weighted composition operators, and the same by Forelli in the classical Hardy spaces HP, with P different from two, of course. All right, so the goal, therefore, is trying to understand the generators of the C0 semigroup of weighted composition operators. There were seminal works in this context of the Hardy space. Those were proved by Siskakis in 1986 and by Koenig in 1990. 
There is a more recent work about this kind of, uh, or about this resource by Hafari, Slowski, and Tonev. And they were studying a strolling continuous semi group uh, that were uh, on Banach spaces of analytic function arising from holomorphic flows in the context of weighted composition operators. In order to understand which is the why when we have a weighted composition operator semigroup, we need a definition, which is the concept of cocycle. Assume we have a holomorphic flow, phi sub t, phi is the, the name for the whole holomorphic flow. A multiplicative cocycle for phi is a continuous complex value function, m, such that it satisfies these three conditions. It's for every t, this is analytic on the unit disk. At zero uh, for every set in the unit disk, its value is one. And it satisfies this uh, third equation for every t and s, bigger or equal than zero and set in the unit disk. Let us call, I mean, let us uh, denote m sub t this uh, function. And there is uh, two remarks that, may, that we should make here. The first one, when we de make the definition of the cocycle, is that the third identity, this one, is often, is often called the cocycle identity. And in particular, it implies that m0, m sub 0 at z is either 1 or 0. So basically, what condition two is telling us is that it is one. So this is simply a non-triviality condition. In 1990, Koenig investigated weighted holomorphic flows on the unit disk and provided a characterization of smooth cocycles in the hard disk space. And he proved in particular that the cocycle identity implies that M cannot be vanishing. I mean, there is a not vanishing function. There is a particular instance of cocycle, which is uh, the concept of co-boundary. Given a holomorphic flow in the unit S, a co-boundary is a continuous complex valued function M, defined of the two variable, right? says that there exists a holomorphic function alpha, which is non-vanishing except possibly for the common fixed point of the elements of the flow, says that this uh, expression holds. I mean, M is just the quotient of alpha at phi sub t of set over alpha of set. That has to happen for every t and set in this domain. As, uh, as I said, the, this is a particular case a very particular case of a cocycle. And in any case, cocycles and co-boundaries appear natu naturally in the theory of weighted composition operator semigroup. Actually, the situation is that uh, if you have a holomorphic flow and an cocycle for phi, the weighted composition operator defined on a space of analytic functions in the unit this by this, it's always a semigroup, but the converse also holds. I mean, it is a semigroup if and only if M is a cocycle for phi. So we have only semigroup of weighted composition operator when we are dealing with cocycles for the flow phi. When we have the particular instance of the co-boundaries, then what's going on is that uh, the Weighted composition operator can be expressed like the multiplication operator by alpha, the function, the composition operator by phi sub t, and the multiplication operator by one over alpha, which is non-vanishing in that case. And this in particular is telling you that the weighted composition operator and the composition operator are similar operators. All right, in 1990, can it prove the following result for HP spaces? But the proof works also for Banach spaces of analytic functions B, 
that satisfy the hypothesis star that I told you. Assume we have a holomorphic flow, phi, and a cycle for phi. And suppose that we have a weighted composition C0 semigroup, this is important, acting on B as the, okay, these are the composition and we are multiplying by the cycle. Let G, the infinitesimal generator of the flow, then the equation, this equation defines an analytic function in the unit is, and M sub T is a cycle for phi. And indeed, M sub T can be expressed as the exponential of this integral. So this is interesting because it's telling us how M sub T is behaving respect to this g. But the second thing, which is uh, more interesting from my perspective, is that if you compute the generator of the semigroup of the weighted composition of the of the weighted composition C0 semigroup, then it tells you that the generator has this form where the domain is obviously those functions such that this expression belongs to the Banach space. So that was proof, as I said, for HP spaces. And if the same sort of ideas works as far as we consider in Banach spaces of analytic functions such that their hypothesis a star is holding for. All right, so we know how uh, if we have a weighted composition C0 semigroup, how are uh, the generator and how these cocycles are behaving. So the following result basically tells you the converse of Kenick for the Banach spaces that satisfy condition star. This is the joint work with Aristomenes Kakis and Dimitri Jakubov. It tells you the following. Assume B is the Banach space of analytic functions on the unities that satisfy the natural condition that we were supposing. And suppose that we have a C0 semigroup on B, that is called ST, whose generator is defined by this expression in, on the domain. Capital G and G are analytic functions in the unit list. Then there exists a holomorphic flow, phi, whose infinitesimal generator is precisely capital G and a cycle M for phi, which satisfy what Kenis was telling us. G of Z is the partial derivative respect to T of M sub T, and M sub T is precisely the exponential of this integral. And in that case, S, S, S T is the weighted composition operator associated to the symbol phi sub T and S sub T. And this is, of course, happening for every, this is holding for every F in the bad space. So we are just telling you that the converse of Kenneth theorem for these Banach spaces are holding, and this is characterizing the generators of the state zero semigroup of weighted composition operators in these Banach spaces. The proof, I think I didn't sketch it, but the proof uh, follows the line of the previous proof that I told you about the previous result. Nevertheless, it's a little bit more involved because we have to play with uh, this equation, right? So, but we begin by imposing the same Cauchy problem. And then we, are def we, are try we need to find out the holomorphic flow and the cycle, but that's, that's how it, it goes. Nevertheless, there are several uh, remarks, or at least that if I would like to say. The first one is that the, by hypothesis, the weighted composition operators that we're considering in our theory adds boundedly, we're assuming they, they add boundedly in the Banach space. And it's, an, it's not known even for the Hardy space HP, what I would say a manageable criteria 
characterizing bounded weighted composition operators. There are known results for HP in terms of pullback of tarazone measure with some weights, but sometimes those uh, criteria are not easy to, to deal with to check if a particular weighted composition operator is or not bounded, even in HP or even in H2. So this is, uh, I guess, a sort of gap in the theory. The second remark, which I think it's important, is that this result that I told you had uh, consequences for spaces of analytic functions or, or over other domains than the unit desk, uh, in particular for Hardy and Smirnoff spaces of bounded and unbounded domains. I'm not going to go on, on to this, but we're not considering the corresponding results that are in a channel that considered for the generators of a C0 semigroup of composition operators on the, another domain. This is just consequences of this result translating some of the properties to this Smirnoff um, spaces of Harvey spaces. All right, the last part of my talk is that we have been using pretty much this condition star. We had also that condition to start in order to understand why we were having quasi-contracted semi-group of not. But uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, or at least in the introduction, there are spaces of analytic functions where you cannot find, uh, where there is no non-trivial C0 semi-group of composition of vehicles. Indeed, Blasco, Contreras, Diaz, Madrigal, Martinez, Papadimatrix, and Siskakis showed that no non trivial holomorphic flow induced a C0 semigroup of composition operators in H infinity or the block space. And the argument, I thought it was quite nice, it was involving a Dunford Petty's property argument. Nevertheless, that was a, there was a question open for BMOA. Um, more recently, Anderson, Jovovic, and Smith, when Smith proved that the same holds for the space BMA, as well as for all Banach spaces or for any Banach spaces of analytic functions that contains H infinity and it's contained in the block space. And the argument was completely different from the, the previous one. It was based on a geometric function theory argument that I will describe in a while. But just recall that the block space is the Banach space endowed with this, with this norm where this is the derivative of the French. All right. When we have an space which contains change infinity and it's contained in the block space, the Banach space of analytic function, this space is no longer separable. It's not like the ones that we were dealing with before. And what we were able to prove jointly with, uh, oh, by the way, I just realized it is, it's not where written, it's the Skakis Jakubovic, sorry. If X is the Banach space of analytic functions on D, such that we have this containment, and phi is a non trivia holomorphic flow. If we have a weighted a composition semigroup induced by phi, namely there exists echo cycles such that the weighted composition operator is well defined on X. What happens is that this weighted composition semigroup is no longer strongly continuous. In other words, the only, I mean, there is no non trivial strongly continuous weighted composition semigroup in these spaces X. And the last, uh, I guess, five minutes I have, I will tell you even less, uh, the key ideas of the proof. And there is a key lemma that tells you how the holomorphic flows are behaving in terms of the boundary uh, points. I mean, this lemma tells you that if you have holomorphic flows, one of the two statements holds. Either you can find a boundary, a, 
a boundary point, a point in the boundary of the unit X, such that the limit, the radial limit at that point exists for every T. And moreover, this point is inside the unit desk and in the image of phi sub t of gamma zero is mapped inside the unit desk, or phi sub t is an automorphism of the unit desk onto itself for everything. This lemma, which was uh, in the heart of the proof of the result by Anderson, Jokovic, or Jokovic and Smith, is based basically on the Koenig model for the uh, holomorphic flow. The Koenig model that surely Isabel talked about in his uh, course is, uh, tells you that if you have a holomorphic flow, there exists a Riemann map H of the unit dish onto a simply connected domain omega with H of zero equals zero and a constant C such that the real part of C is bigger or equal than zero, says that you have two options. Each element of the holomorphic float can be written in this way, or each element of the holomorphic flow can be written in this way. This is a dilation, or at least they are conjugate to dilations, each element of the holomorphic flow, and this is telling you that each element of the holomorphic forms are conjugated to a translation. And in such a case, the domain, the simply connected domain omega, uh, in the first case has to be spiral-like. Uh, that means that omega e to minus ct has to belong to omega for every omega in omega and t positive. And in the second case, it has to be close to convex. We have this condition omega plus ct has to belong to the domain for every point in the domain and t positive. So as I said, this lemma, which is one of the key elements of the proof, is based on this Koenig model. The second one, uh, the second idea, is uh, somehow was already in the paper by uh, Anderson, Djokovic, and Smith. And okay, because of the closed graph theorem, the inclusion of X in the block space is continuous. So in order to prove that there is no non-trivial uh, C0 semigroup of weighted composition operators in X, it's uh, suffice to prove that there exists a function f, which is in H infinity, because it's contained in x, and a constant delta says that we have this condition. And this is the norm in the block space. If we prove this, then it's impossible to be strongly continued, right? And in order to construct such a function, what we, I want Oh, I won't go into details, but uh, what we do is constructing an interpolating Blasky product F with a specific zeros and considering a bound estimates for the modulus of the derivative using a result by Hirela, Pelaev, and Bukotic. That allows us to construct, it's a little bit more involved than the one that the construction or the similar the construction provided by. Anderson, Djokovic, um, and Smith, but in some sense it follows that that lines. I mean, they the just the construction in the sense of constructing a function in H infinity. Okay. All right. This this gives uh, you the statement of the last theorem I wanted to talk about. I think I'm at the end. So basically, this is all I wanted to say today. There are some references for the talk. Uh, this is the Anderson, Jovovich, and Smith. This is the paper I was telling you about the existence of, of the non existence of uh, C0 semigroup, composition semigroup in BMA. These were uh, the, the results by Aren and Challenger and the generators of semigroup in general domains. This was the starting point, the work by Abiko, Challenger, and Parkinson, when we began to, to, to look at this. This has been already appearing in the 
in the talk several times. This is the seminar work by Bergson and Porter. This book was not cited in my talk, but it's really interesting and they made a very nice uh, presentation of the uh, geometric properties of our semi-group of holomorphic flows. This is the joint work with Aristo Siskakis and Dimitri Jakubovic. And this was the previous one with Dimitri Jakubovic. And those are the one related to the cycles and the results regarding to a semi-group of weighted composition operator I was talking about. So this is everything for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> now, questions, comments? There is a comment in the chat. Well, if you have a question, then please just go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Or if there aren't any questions, then let's thank our speaker again. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, there is someone. Uh, can you share the slides in the chat? There is a request. Oh, there is something in the chat. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I can. If I send you to, if I send you the slides, uh, is that? Can you? Do you put them? I don't know how to put it in the in the chat. Uh, it's not clear to me. Uh, 